Radha Swami Baba Ji, after so many years on the path, I still feel I'm stuck on the same place. I haven't moved at all. And I feel my meditation is not, is not, not really good. Well, sister, that's because we are not going anywhere. We are already there. We just need to experience it. You know, I think all of us feel, oh, I have to reach that place, I have to reach that place, I am at that stage, I am at that stage. This is all very conceptual. You are already there. You just need to see it and experience it. Please don't analyze. What is important is that we just cleanse the vessel and make ourselves worthy of His grace. And the rest He will do for us. Babaji, one request, please. Could you please bless this family with seva and satsang forever? Seva is there for all of us. Seva doesn't mean doing something in a particular place. Seva is the attitude with whatever you do. So whatever you do in a selfless manner, whether it's your housework, job, you know, anything, it has to be selfless. That will become your seva. Thank you very much, Babaji. Radha Swami. Brother Swami Babaji, thank you for granting us the opportunity for all of us to talk to you today. Uh, Babaji, we all live in the same repetitive life cycle, which consists of being born, uh, graduating, applying for a job, raising a family, and then inevitably dying. As well, all of us collectively have worsened the earth's conditions through global warming, pollution, etc. So my main question to you is, what is the purpose of our presence in this creation. But uh, we may do things without an objective. The Lord never does anything without an objective. No, there has to be a lo logical conclusion to whatever you do in life. So having evolved from the lower species, there are still influences of those species which are there in our behavioral patterns. So he has given us an opportunity to rid us of those. You know, this calm, growth, low, mo, ahankar, all these passions. So this life is an opportunity to learn and really know what it means to be human. This word human being is learning to be human. That's the opportunity. So we have to get rid of these influences which keep on pulling our attention down. We have to take our attention upwards. And as we realize what it means to be human, you know, the next step to godliness will happen on its own. There's a quote uh, from the Bani, Granth Sahib, Bhai par apat manukh de huriya gobind milin ki eh teri bariya avar kaj tere kite na kaam mil saad sangat bhaj keval naam this life has given to us as an opportunity. Bhai parapat manuk. This human life. Gobind malen ki ehe teri variya. This is the moment because it is only in the uh, as a human being that you can access the divine. That you can get mukti, salvation. And no other creature can get salvation. The others are evolving. You've reached a stage where you can either get out of the circle of 84 or go downward of the ladder. Thank you, Bhavaji. Rasmang Bhavaji, I devote my attention, I do try and do my full meditation throughout the day. However, when I get up from a meditation, it looks like um, I feel that guilty feeling where I realize that I have done everything, but my mind is not able to be focused at the eye center, Babaji. Peter, you know, that saying in English, it is not to question when or why, but only to do and die. When you are in war, when the general tells the army to march, you march. You don't question why, where, when, how. You march. So here in meditation, we are not looking for results. We are doing our meditation because our master wants us to do it. And if we learn to stay in his hukam, in his will, 
when he takes the responsibility, he will see us through. So don't analyze where you have reached, what is happening. Our purpose is to clean the vessel and keep the vessel clean. We can't fill the vessel, he will fill the vessel. Thank you very much. Rala Swami Bhavaji, um, when one experiences death in the family quite recently, how do we ensure that the person who's passed has transcended and what happens to them and how do we make sure that they've transcended to the other plane, to the divine? We can't do anything in that. When somebody has left the physical plane, his connection with us is finished. Whatever happens better is, is based on your karmas. If you have positive karmas, it will happen accordingly. If there are negative karmas, it will happen accordingly. There's nothing. And karmas can't be given or taken. So there's nothing we can do. Whilst they are alive, yes, we can create a conducive atmosphere, a positive atmosphere. But after death, there's nothing we can do. That Then it's everything is dependent upon their actions in life. What is karma? Action, reaction, consequence. Radhaswami Babaji. In the New Testament, we can read that Master Jesus spoke of social responsibilities when he said that one must give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. What should then be the attitude of a seeker of spirituality when faced by injustices, cruelty, or abuse of power from coming from higher quarters? Should he look the other way and avoid the issue altogether? Or should he speak out to try and right a wrong? There are two aspects to this. Now one is, do I have the power to change? So many mystics have come into this creation. If they had wanted to change the world, they would have changed it by now. We attribute so many miracles to them, but they came with a, a particular message, thy will be done. Now, everybody is in a particular situation because of his actions, because of his karmas. And he has to go through that. Now, we can't change everybody. We can't change people. We can't change our relatives, our children, nobody. But we can change ourselves. So if I strengthen myself, that I'm not affected by what they do, then automatically I will be able to keep my balance without just reacting to circumstances or to life. There are certain things in life you can change, certain things in life you can't change. You have to learn to accept. So if I don't have the power to change and I start trying to do it, what am I doing? I'm just going to upset the balance within my life, the harmony within my life, and then everything is going to be in turmoil. So on the other hand, I keep on working till I can make a difference. When I reach a certain level where I can make the difference, then if I do something, yes. But if right from the start, I start trying to do it, it's, it's just like a, a little drop in the ocean. Thank you very much, Master. Uh, and thank you very much for, for the caring that you always show towards us. Brother Swami. Brother Swami, dearest Babaji, I miss you very much. When soul is encountering many difficulties with a meditation, please advise. Because this is part of our learning process. When a child goes to school, I mean, it's not that overnight he learns everything. There's a process to be followed. There are, there are times he understands, there are times he doesn't understand. There are times when he can easily pass his exam and there are times when nothing makes sense to him. So we have to be persistent. And we have to keep on doing it. And slowly, slowly, we will be able to achieve our goal. But we analyze too much, Vita. Stop analyzing. Just do your meditation. Please shower your divine grace and mercy upon me. Thank you, Brother Swami. Brother Swami Babaji. Thank you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to interact with you. Babaji, parenting is so difficult. It must have always been difficult, but it seems more so nowadays. 
how do we protect our kids from social media peer pressure parental pressure and guide them to be good human beings and make proper career choices like you always say distractions have always been there but it just feels that everything is so easily accessible to the kids these days such young kids nowadays have anxiety issues how do we protect them or help help our kids so that's because we put them into the race at a very early stage why is there so much depression in the youngsters you know somebody has liked me and somebody has disliked me somebody has put me off somebody has put me this thing who's brought about this media beta we we brought it into our homes and what what is the example that we are setting we are constantly on our cell phone on our computers all the day so how do you expect the children not to learn from that we have to set the right example there's nothing wrong in the computer or the cell phone as long as it is a tool in your hand but the moment you become a slave to it then it's going to create havoc with your life so that balance is essential so where children are concerned set up you know time frames okay you can play at this time you're at the dining table no cell phones no computers but let's start from ourselves first Uh, Swami Baba Ji, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. You have given us all your grace is always with me, but my children are not in this path. Can you put shower your grace, please? Sir, I don't. No, no, I don't think so. We should force anybody. You know, you be a good example, but don't force anybody. What if they try and force you to leave the path? Would you like that? So just as you would like them to respect your point of view, you must learn to respect their point of view. And if you are a good example, you know some people mature early, some people mature late. I mean, we all have our priorities in life. Just be a good example, give them the right values, and then let them make their choice. Thank you very much. Just shower your grace on the family. Thank you, Radha Swami. Uh, Swami Baba Ji, I just want to say when I sit for meditation, uh, sometimes I, after a little time, I sort of uh, feel as if in dual situation. I'm sleeping and yet I'm awake, and then I, as if I'm with some some souls. I don't see them, but I can feel the impression who they are. Mister, this is called increased awareness. as the consciousness starts rising na our vision is opened up earlier on if you are sitting with your eyes closed and all there are a lot of noises in the room which you were not aware of but when you reached that state of increased awareness even an ant walking on the floor na you will hear it yeah but then so what is just no but don't analyze it learn to enjoy it yeah but at that time I start suddenly feeling very tired, and as if I've been away for hours and hours, and they sort of I get in, uh, sort of uh, messages, sort of thing, and say, no, no, "But you no, haven't visited so and so. You haven't visited so and so person." And no, then don't I pay, don't pay attention. No, don't pay attention. Don't pay attention. You just focus on your meditation. Don't pay attention to all these. This is the mind trying to get your trust. Once it gets your trust, it will drop you like a brick. So don't pay attention to that. You just pay attention to your meditation. Keep your then attention at the eye center. Then I go back to Simran again and start all over again. No, carry on with your bhajan. Last one, me, Baba Ji. Baba Ji, when we are in a moment of happiness or sorrow, we can console ourselves with the phrase "This too shall pass," and we find a balance. Baba Ji. when we are in a situation of um a difficulty in security or fear we find that these can um, influence our decisions and actions which is that spiritual teaching we can go to which can guide us at that moment okay that's exactly what we are trying to do is get in touch with the creative power within all fear is born of the unknown factor anything that you know you understand you will not be scared of it you are scared to go into a dark room why because you don't know what lies behind the veil veil of darkness 
But if you take the support of light, you can see and it removes the fear better. So similarly in life, this is the unknown factor. In the Bani, Guru Sahib says, Gur Gyan Anjan Sach Nitri Paya Antar Channan Agyan Andher Gawaya. When you put the surma of Naam in your eyes, that will have, help you to see. And that awakening will take the darkness of ignorance out of your life and remove all fears. What does the Bible say? If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay. Means you rise above the two physical eyes, open the third eye. And then you will see your whole life will be illuminated that the darkness of ignorance will be removed and there, there will be no fear. Thank you, Papaji. That's for me. Hey, Brother Swami Papaji. Um, my question was that there's so many fears that we live with in life about death, about change. Even the smallest things sometimes scare me. And I wanted to ask you, um, what's the best way to live courageously? Okay, I just explain. The fear is of the unknown. So if we make the unknown into the known, there will be no fear. Why are we scared of death? Because we don't know what will happen. But if you conquer death, then you won't be scared of anything in life. Right? So, this is just the unknown factor. So, through the meditative process, we are trying to eliminate the light within us so that we can see and remove these fears. That's true. Yeah. So you think even with things like change, we should just approach them head on so that we... Um... Change is always constant, Peter. Is there anything that stands still? No. We're all subject to time. Hmm? There's nothing that stands still, Peter. The only sort of uh, predictable thing is death. Okay. Thanks, Lavaji. Master, thank you for all your love and care. Master, we often hear in satsang, they say, Ek gadi adi gadi adi se bhi ad. Whenever we are in the company of a saint or the truth, nobody can harm us. As your initiates, we try our best from our side. We try to balance. But still, we all complain that we are not satisfied. But like a student who does his homework, he does his exam and he's not worried. He's not worried whether he'll pass or no. He's just satisfied that he has done his best. So what can we do so that we can go through life like that student, doing our bit and just leaving the rest in your hands? First you must, first you must have that understanding that you are doing your best. The student feels that he's got nothing to worry if he's done his best. But the question is, are we doing our best? We all have a certain capacity and capability. Are we utilizing that? Are we learning to live uh, in his will. So how can we tell Babaji whether we are doing our best or no? We try. If you are doing your best automatically, there will be a certain peace within you. But... So I, I won't analyze. I won't say that I've, I, I have to do so much. I have to do so much. You do your best. He knows our situations. He knows what we are going through. He sees your effort. As long, as long as you can genuinely say that you've done your best and you put in your utmost effort, then it's up to him. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Hi, Babaji. Babaji, um, if you have a friend or a colleague or a family member that is that tends to get consumed by fear, consumed to the point where that fear turns into an intense physical reaction, no, I think we are all to blame. You know, it's it's like in a household, we are all members of a particular house. So the atmosphere is definitely going to affect everybody better. It's going to be positive, negative. And if we start losing our confidence, why do we lose our confidence? Because of situations, because of the experiences we've had. So if everybody in the family is supportive, why would I not have the confidence that I can go through anything in life? But when I see things happening, you know, which might go either way, then slowly, slowly I start losing my confidence. Na? So if all of us are supportive, 
if there's harmony in the house, all around us, that makes life so positive and conducive that you would always feel that I can do anything. So it's about family support? It's about everybody. I mean, I've, I've just sort of used the word family, but I think whether it's at work, whether it's in the house, wherever we are, you can bring out the best in people and you can bring out the worst in people. Thank you for that. I have another question, Master. Um, in, when somebody is not initiated, uh, especially in the, in the Hindu culture, there are a number of requirements that are required to be done with that, when there's a death in the family. And there's rites and rituals, um, certain things are required of us by, by priests and by, by, by scholars. What is the value of this and, and, and how necessary is it and what's, what purpose does it serve? Bita, what do we call a ritual? A ritual is something which you do without understanding or it having any logical value. That is a ritual. Anything that can take you towards a logical goal will not be a, a ritual. It can be a tradition. It can be something else. But we won't call it a ritual. Now, all these things that were created were to take your mind away from that loss. Now, the soul has left the body. Whatever you do after the soul has left the body is meaningless for that soul. You know, it's like you didn't love somebody whilst he was alive and after his death you cry and you shout and you put uh, lots of fancy words on his tombstone. It's meaningless. So, but uh, all these rituals and ceremonies, they were created just to take your focus away from that loss that has happened. For you to remember the Lord, to take your thoughts to a positive side, rather than being negative because you've lost a family member or someone you love. That was the purpose. Now today, we don't do that. As a ritual, you keep on performing all those things without knowing why you are doing it and it having no meaning to the passing away of someone. If somebody's already, if somebody's left the, if somebody's left the body, the soul has gone. The body is there. So whatever you do with the body, that is going to go with the body. Body is dust to dust. Thank you, Master. I have one last question. Um, and again, a family member uh, has asked that if they pursue a career in medicine and as a doctor, they are involved in a situation in which a patient were to lose his life, where's the karmic aspect of that what what how does the doctor participate in that karma no better like i just uh, said before that coming and going is in the lord's hand the doctor is meant to heal to the extent he can help he should help but life and death is not in his hands that's not in his hands that feeling of responsibility that i've contributed to this death but if we are responsible, there will always be a sense of responsibility for whatever you do. If something happens in your shop, won't you feel a sense of responsibility? Some people take all the responsibility, some people take no responsibility. So that responsibility is meant for us to learn. That we should sort of learn from this situation so that we can do a better job next time. But to say that everything that happens is because of you, it's not necessarily like that. Thank you very much, Master. It's been great having you in Gibraltar. Absolutely great. Thank you so much. Hi, Babaji. You are Babaji, it's taken a long time to work up to the two and a half. Really long. And when I got there, it started slipping again, and I can't keep it up. Hey, Victor. Like I said, if you can't sit in one place, break it up. Suppose you can't sit two and a half hours in a particular day, say, okay, I'll sit at night also. I feel Let's create, no, but it doesn't matter. Create that habit of sitting down. The once, you're in that, once you're in the habit, then sleep will be the least of your problems, better. There are times, you know, and we don't know the difference between sleep and when the consciousness rises. We think we've fallen asleep. So don't analyze it. We said we are going to do it, we are going to do it. 
So just look at it that way that I'm going to sit down, whatever I promised, I'm going to do that and leave the rest to him. Radha Swami Babaji. Babaji, earlier you spoke about focus, that if we are working, we should focus on work. If we are focused on, on the house, we should focus on the house. And in the meditation, we should focus on meditation. But in my case, it's been close to 30 years that in meditation, I think about everything else. But every time I try to repeat the names, I start a little while and then my mind goes off into thousand and one things all the time. Because that's the habit you've created. Mind is a creature of habit. We have to break that habit. If somebody says, I've been drinking for 30 years, now what can I do? Well, if he knows it's bad for him, he has to break that habit. But how 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 can we do that? I mean, it's... By, by focusing what you are doing. But it's very, very, very difficult. Because what is easy in life? Is doing business easy? No, is looking after your children easy? Is pleasing your wife easy? No. Well, then what is easy? It's true, but it's been a long, long time. I mean, it's 28 years now. No, but it's not a question of time. I mean, I don't think so. Time has got anything to do. If time was the factor, I, I was put into this uh, responsibility. I had hardly been initiated for a few years. So it's got nothing to do with time. It has to do with your focus and the intensity of your what you want. And if you want to do it, you can do it. You'll have to give us the strength to be able to do it, Master. Master.